Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of bonding, and in particular, ionic bonding. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson one of seven in this tutorial, covering ionic bonding. This is the first video in our series of seven lessons on the topic of bonding. In the last lesson, we covered writing balanced equations and performing calculations. Here are the key learning objectives for this lesson. We will start off by looking at the formation of ions, look at compound ions, and finally we will look at the formulae of ionic compounds. Here are the AQA specification points for this tutorial. Pause the video now to have a read through them before we begin. We'll start off by looking at what ionic bonding involves. Let's look at three important definitions for this section. The first is compound, the second is ionic bond, and the final one we'll cover in this section is lattice. A compound is formed when two or more elements join together, forming bonds between them. For example, carbon dioxide is a compound formed where carbon and oxygen atoms join together. An ionic bond is the bond formed between a positively charged and negatively charged ions. Due to the electrostatic forces of attraction between them. A lattice is a regular structure. As we can see here, this cube is a lattice since the purple and the green dots are arranged in a uniform pattern. Let's look at this example. In the transfer of an electron from sodium to chlorine, sodium is going to lose an electron, whilst the chlorine gains an electron. Therefore, Na is going to become an Na plus cation and the chlorine is going to become a Cl minus anion. In this diagram, it is important that you remember that the inner shells are not shown here. We can form ions through the transfer of electrons. A negative ion is formed if an atom gains an electron, and a positive ion is formed if an atom loses an electron. Atoms want to gain a full outer shell of electrons because this makes the atom stable and unreactive. Noble gases are inert. A lot of ions are formed from single atoms. This means an electron is transferred between only one type of atom. For example, Na plus is an ion formed from a single Na atom. It is formed when a sodium atom loses an electron. This table will help you to visualise the charges of ions formed by specific elements, depending on which group they are in. Group 1 elements are going to have one electron in their outer shell. Group 2 
will have two electrons in their outer shell. Group 6 will have 6. And group 7 will have 7 outermost electrons. Let's quickly recap those again. Group 1 has 1 outermost electron. Group 2 has 2. Group 6 will have 6. And group 7 will have 7 outermost electrons. This means that the group of the periodic table will tell us how many electrons are in each element's outer shell. For example, here are some of the group 2 elements. They all have two outer electrons, as shown here. Let's move on to our next specification point, which allows us to predict the charge on a simple iron. This time, we'll use the table to see the charges of the ions formed by specific elements, depending on which group they are in. Group 1 will form plus 1 ions. Group 2 will form plus 2 ions. Group 6 will form minus 2 ions. And group 7 will form 1 minus ions. We've just seen how the group of the periodic table tells us which ions will be formed by each element. This trick works because all the elements in one group of the periodic table will have the same number of electrons in their outer shell. Therefore, they will form ions with the same charge. This is because they all have to gain or lose the same number of electrons to achieve a full outer shell. For example, all the group 2 elements will lose 2 electrons to form plus 2 ions. The electrons that will be lost are shown in yellow here. Since these electrons have been lost, there is no need for an extra shell, so the total number of shells will also decrease by 1. Our next specification point covers the formulae of compound ions. A compound ion is formed from multiple atoms instead of single atoms. Have a go at filling in the formula and the charges of the following ions. The answers will be on the next slide. AQA exams want you to learn the formulae shown in this table. Make sure that you know them off by heart, as they won't be given to you in an exam question. Let's move on to our final specification point, covering how to construct formulae from ionic compounds. If an ionic compound has an overall charge of zero, it must consist of ions with charges that balance each other out. For example, NaCl is an ionic compound. It is made of the ions Na+, which has a plus 1 charge, and Cl-, which has a minus 1 charge. These two charges will balance out to give us an overall charge of 0. The formula of a compound can be calculated by comparing the charges of the ions present in that compound. If there are two ions present in an ionic compound, where one has a charge of plus one and the other has a charge of plus two, two positive ions will be needed to balance the charge of the minus two ion. Let's have a go at this question. What is the formula for sodium chloride? The correct answer is NaCl since Na has a plus 1 charge and Cl has a minus 1 charge. What is the formula for calcium carbonate? The answer 
is CaCO3. This is because the calcium ion has a plus two charge, whilst the carbonate ion has a minus two charge. What is the formula for potassium sulfate? Since the potassium ion has a plus one charge and the sulfate ion has a minus two charge, the answer will be K2SO4. Let's fill in this table to recap what we have just learnt. First, we'll look at sodium chloride. So the ions that are present are sodium, which has a plus one charge, and chlorine, which has a minus one charge. The formula, therefore, is NaCl. Next, we'll look at calcium carbonate. Calcium has a plus two charge. And carbonate has a minus two charge. Therefore, the formula will be CaCO3. Finally, we'll look at potassium sulfate. The ions that are present are potassium ions, which have a plus one charge, and sulfate ions. These have a minus two charge. This means that the formula for potassium sulfate will be K2SO4. This is a handy table to have for your revision, as it covers all the key points from the last few slides. We've now covered all the learning objectives for this lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything that you are unsure of. We have now completed lesson one. If you liked this video, Make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.